Spokane County may sue a local helicopter owner for using his yard as a helipad. Neighbors say it's been going on for years now. Plus, Bernie Sanders is making his first stop in Washington this election season. We'll take you to his rally in Tacoma. And an incident at the Spokane Intermodal Center has now led to a federal lawsuit against the U.S. government. Why a Portland comedian is accusing Border Patrol of false arrests. Well, that is video of a helicopter taking off from a Spokane Valley man's private property. His neighbors say it's too loud and not safe for the area. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Welcome everyone. I'm Whitney Ward. So now Spokane County is preparing to file a lawsuit against the owner of that helipad. Crime 2's Amanda Rowley talked with those neighbors today. Today we spoke to one resident on Shawnee Drive in Spokane Valley. They said they moved to this area because of the beautiful trees and landscape and wildlife they get to see here along with the quiet. But that's all changed now that their neighbor built a hangar and now uses a helicopter on their private property. Neighbors here in this close knit neighborhood say they are just concerned for everyone's safety. Carl Strode moved to the Painted Hills neighborhood three years ago. He says in 2017, his next door neighbor, Jim Charbonneau, took out several trees to build a helipad. When he first mentioned to us he was getting ready to build a heliport and fly helicopters out of our neighborhood, we asked him, I says, is that legal here? He, he says, of course it is. By 2018, Strode and his wife, Dana, saw the first helicopter fly onto Charbonneau's property. Strode shot this video from his backyard. It is a big safety concern. Here in this neighborhood, we've got a pretty large fire hazard because of lots of the trees. According to an online records database, Charbonneau owns two helicopters. Those records also indicate he only has his student pilot's license as of April 2019. It's scary because we think any day, if I owned two helicopters and uh, I had them right next to my house, I would imagine that I'd be tempted to fly them. A notice from the Federal Aviation Administration dated October 19, 2018, identified Charbonneau's use of the helipad as objectionable. The FAA said its aeronautical study determined the proposed private use of the helipad would have a substantial adverse effect on the safe and efficient use of airspace and safety of people and property in the area. It adds the heliport is in a congested residential neighborhood with hillside homes and forested areas. Last week, Spokane County commissioners approved a resolution authorizing the filing of a lawsuit against Charbonneau. It says an active heliport within a low-density residential zone presents a significant risk to lives and property with those located within the community. Now, the county warned Charbonneau in October last year it would seek legal action if he continued to use his property as a heliport. While we were in the neighborhood, we did stop by Jim Charbonneau's home. We wanted to ask him about his helicopter and the hangar on his property. We stopped by twice and knocked on the door, but he never came to the door. Reporting in Spokane Valley, Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. An incident at the Spokane Intermodal Center has now led to a federal lawsuit against the U.S. government. Comedian Mohanad El Sheke is accusing Border Patrol of false arrest for pulling him off of a Greyhound bus and demanding his papers. It's all part of a regular and controversial practice by Border Patrol. This lawsuit argues, though, it was an illegal act of racial profiling. So our political reporter Casey Decker is joining us now live in the newsroom with details about this lawsuit. Casey? Well, Whitney, Mark, the case is familiar by now to people in and out of Spokane. It got national attention thanks to El Sheke's viral Twitter thread. And now, more than a year after it happened, the legality of Border Patrol's actions will finally be debated in court. After performing a comedy show at WSU, Mohanad El Sheke was on a bus about to head for Portland. Border Patrol agents then boarded and began questioning passengers. But El Sheke says they did so selectively. In particular, he says they talked to three people who looked Hispanic and him. The suit says he does not recall them questioning any white people. Mohanad El Sheke is a comedian who was last year based in Portland but has since moved to New York. He's originally from Libya. He came to America on a student visa. But according to the suit, once civil war broke out in Libya, quote, El Sheke was notified that people were looking for him in Libya, had raided his room, and were searching for documents to prove his allegiance to one of the warring factions. 
He applied for and got asylum in the U.S. Once Border Patrol learned that he was a Libyan national, agents asked El Sheke for documents. He showed them an Oregon driver's license and a work permit. But Border Patrol says that's not enough, that asylees need to carry their approval document. Eventually, El Sheke was allowed back on the bus. The lawsuit just filed says agents behaved aggressively and illegally. Quote, CBP agents used displays of force and authority to ensure that Mr. El Sheke did not feel free to leave. The agents did so without a warrant, probable cause, or reasonable suspicion. It accuses Border Patrol of false arrest and false imprisonment. CBP has historically claimed the law allows them to conduct this sort of questioning within 100 miles of the border, and Spokane just makes that cut. The suit describes the experience as traumatizing, with agents accusing El Sheke of being an illegal faking documents and him fearing deportation back to Libya. It claims a variety of damages from loss of liberty to emotional distress to economic loss, saying El Sheke had to cancel shows because of the trauma, which brought back PTSD symptoms and recurring nightmares. Border Patrol provided a statement that reads in part, quote, agents acted in accordance with current U.S. immigration laws and within their authority. It says that taking El Sheke off the bus was a common practice to protect his privacy, that, quote, it only took a fraction of the 20 minutes the suit claims and that the bus was not delayed as was alleged. Now, at the moment, the lawsuit does not put a dollar figure on those damages. Since it was just filed today, no hearing has yet been set. Mark Whitney. All right, Casey Decker live in the newsroom for that. Casey, thank you very much. To weather now, while it's still snowing in the mountains, the sunshine in town, man, making it feel a bit like spring right now. Sure did. It was a beautiful sunset tonight. Tom Sherry is here now with an update for us, Tom. Yeah, I say let's do it again tomorrow. We should be able to do that. I'm forecasting high pressure and, and really no cloud cover tomorrow. We're going to get a cold night tonight. We do see a few very isolated snow showers across areas of northeastern Washington and northern Idaho, but for the most part, we've enjoyed clear skies. That's what you'll get tonight. We uh, could see some patchy freezing fog, especially northern valleys. Those temperatures are going to get really cold, dropping down into the teens. Here in Spokane, we should drop down to 22. For us, after we burn off the low clouds, we should enjoy a daytime high of 40 degrees. For the weekend, it gets even warmer. Highs close to 50, 48 Saturday and Sunday, but we'll see more cloud cover and a pretty good chance we could see some valley rain and mountain snow on Sunday. We'll talk more about your forecast coming up in a few minutes. All right, Tom, thank you so much. A Pierce County woman is expected in court tomorrow on charges that she drugged a woman and tried to steal her baby. 38 year old Juliet Parker has been released on bail. Investigators say she pretended to be a photographer and offered free maternity and newborn photos on Facebook community groups. She wanted a girl and she wanted him five weeks and younger, younger so she could raise it herself, take it out of state and pretend it was a newborn of her own. Parker is now charged with drugging one mom, and police say she went to that woman's home several different times. The mom says Parker took selfies with her baby and even wiped down her fingerprints from anything she had touched. During her third visit, authorities say Parker and her 16-year-old daughter gave the woman a cupcake, which police say had drugs in it. That mom then called 911. Parker and her daughter were arrested at their house, which is about 40 miles south of Seattle. Other moms now coming forward sharing their concerns. I do think this should be a warning to other moms. It makes me anxious to know that people like that can be so manipulative and really work their way into your life, and it's so easy to get caught up in it. Parker also unsuccessfully ran for mayor of Colorado Springs just last year. Authorities say she has operated under several different aliases. Right now, 712 people in Washington are under public health supervision for the coronavirus. Those are new numbers from the State Department of Health. Meanwhile, a plane carrying about a dozen high-risk Americans who were evacuated from a quarantined cruise ship have arrived in Nebraska this morning. They'll be monitored there at the University of Nebraska for signs of the coronavirus. More than 300 Americans were taken off the Diamond Princess off the coast of Japan. Health leaders now say 14 of them have tested positive for the illness. The latest data appears to show the virus is not as deadly as SARS and some other coronaviruses. More than 80% of patients have mild disease and will recover. Health leaders are working to track down more than 2,000 passengers and crew members who were on a different cruise ship in Cambodia. They were given the all clear to leave, but then a passenger tested positive for the virus. 
And the U.S. State Department is urging Americans not to travel to China because of this outbreak. That travel ban is keeping a Washington family, though, from uniting with a baby they just adopted. With more cases every day, we just wonder and, you know, hope and pray that it's going to end. We don't know when. We, you know, we just want to go over there and bring him home. So the Northwest-based agency that the couple used is now holding a fundraiser to keep those children in China safe. Holt International raised more than $50,000 to help protect 600 children in Wuhan, China right now.